We're looking at ways to uh, get past an inside block, by which I mean, uh, let's say Bruce throws a straight punch and I go one, two, back fist, and he blocks that, right? Or he throws a straight punch and I go parry here, my fingers in his eyes, or a punch, and I come with an elbow, and he blocks it. Or maybe I throw more than one strike, so I go one, two, three, and then I come here, and I get blocked. I'm on the inside, right, as opposed to um, being on the outside here. I'm on the inside, and my strike gets blocked. Or, you know, maybe that's a circular strike. And same thing, I come with something here, and it gets blocked. So what do I do about this here? Now, the first category of responses would be just to ignore that block and flow into something else. What I, the first is rising elbow. So I'm here, I just change the angle slightly and I come up with my elbow. So I go here, my strike gets blocked, I just change the angle a little, I come up. If I had thrown an elbow strike, maybe I come in with an inside elbow, he blocks it, I change the angle, I come up. And then what I'd like you to do is to play around with follow-ups. Continue on with something that you know, based on your own experience. So back to here, Bruce. So I come, go ahead. I come with that elbow, it gets blocked, I go with the rising elbow, maybe I flow into arm and head, I slingshot the head, I go cross, hook, cross, I throw a knee strike, whatever. There are many, many possibilities from there. And I think sometimes students think that instructors are just when an instructor says the possibilities from here are endless, it's because the instructor can't think of anything to say. <laughs> I could literally probably run through 40 or 50 different options from that point right there. So you have to just um, improvise based on your own experience and knowledge. Number two was the headbutt. Can you so I come with the back fist or the elbow. He blocks it, so I just ignore that. I move it aside just a little bit to create an opening down the middle, and I come with the headbutt at the top of my head right here. Boom. Yeah, and that's likely to knock his head back, so maybe I continue with um, a knife hand strike into the neck or an elbow. I flow to something else. I bring that arm across. I put on an arm bar or a Z-lock here, I flow to another lock. Number three, if you recall, was the knee strike. So, I'm here, I come with my elbow, he blocks it. Come on, over, come on to this side. Number three was the knee strike. So I'm here, I come with my elbow, he blocks it. I'm just gonna grab this hand right here, I'm gonna grab his shoulder right there. This is one of the reasons why we keep the hand open on elbow strikes, is because if you're in elbow range, you're in grappling range. So I'm here, I come with that elbow, I just grab that shoulder, and I pull him into the knee strike. And now I'm off the center line, and I can work him from the side over here, or I can bring him through, and I can work him from this side. Bah. If he, if he posts like that, I can just kick that out. I like to put a little weight on that, and then kick it out. Stomp on it. So, that's the first category where you just ignore the block. In uh, the next video, we'll look at how you break free of it or move it out of the way. Alright, thanks very much. Thank you, Bruce. And uh, please subscribe.